A Ukrainian court has sentenced an American farmer to prison on allegations of attempting to kill a business associate who has become a government minister. Kurt Groshnin's family argues the allegations are false and intend to silence his claims of wrongdoing. Today, we'll go over the whole ordeal and the links it may have to the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. So what exactly happened? Roman Leshenko, the farmer's former partner, denied stealing money from an American corporation. Groshin's allies and family are also afraid that the North Dakota man may be left behind as the U.S. prepares for a possible Russian attack on Ukraine. The State Department says it's keeping a close eye on the situation and takes its obligation to assist imprisoned Americans very seriously. Kurt Groshin set off from North Dakota in 2017 for Ukraine, anxious to reconnect with his family's ancestral birthplace and cultivate the country's famed rich black soil. However, his agricultural endeavor with a law professor, who is now a high-ranking Ukrainian government official, quickly devolved into squabbles and allegations, resulting in his arrest last November on charges of planning to kill his former business partner. The charges, according to his family and allies, are false and intended to quiet Groshin's assertions of corruption in Ukraine, a country torn between Russian and Western interests and struggling to shed its bribery and cronyism reputation. The case is developing as Ukraine prepares for a possible Russian invasion, and the U.S. has ordered American embassy personnel's families to flee. Groshin's family is concerned that the North Dakota farmer may be left behind due to the turmoil, with the U.S. government busy with bigger concerns about probable military action and global disruption. Groshin's sister was scared for her brother's safety at the moment, especially given what she'd seen in the news about Russian forces on the border. She urged the Biden administration and the State Department to use their influence to bring him home, fearful that an invasion would force the departure of the U.S. diplomatic workers. She's concerned that if the embassy is not present to check on him and ensure that he's safe, something awful will occur. Next, did the State Department comment on the matter? The State Department said it takes its obligation to assist jailed Americans seriously and was carefully following the matter, but declined to comment any further. Senator Kevin Kramer of North Dakota, who recently paid a visit to Groshin's in a detention center while awaiting trial, said the incident has created friction between at least me and them, if not our two governments, that should be alleviated at a time when U.S. and Ukrainian views should be united in countering Moscow's threat. He went on to say that this kind of tension is unnecessary and that they could get rid of it all by simply releasing Kurt. Why did Groshin's move to Ukraine? Groshin's, a native of Ashley, North Dakota, relocated to Ukraine in 2017 to be closer to his relatives. The opportunity to work in the country's renowned black dirt was a dream come true, and he put a considerable quantity of money into setting up a farming enterprise. Groshin's was pleased with his job in a nation where agriculture is revered, and he sent images of his harvest to his family on a regular basis. Once there, he met Roman Leshenko, a law professor who volunteered himself as a native speaker with experience in the local farming industry and regulatory needs. Groshin's made him the company's director. Next, let's get into some details of the lawsuit. Leshenko began embezzling money from Groshin's, according to a complaint and an online post, robbing him of over $250,000 and moving the money to a family firm. Groshin's has been outspoken about his claims, calling himself a modest yet duped investor. He went on to say that he isn't the first or last American investor to pick the wrong individual as a manager. However, this manager's personality distinguishes his situation. Leshenko declined to comment, but in interviews with Ukrainian media, he refuted the allegations of misappropriation and stated that the men had agreed that Leshenko's company would operate the agricultural operation. He made his own claims against Groshin's, stating that the American farmer planted genetically engineered soybeans, which are prohibited in Ukraine for production and sale, and that this revelation forced Leshenko to quit the firm and was the source of their quarrel. How will the case proceed? The events of these criminal proceedings must be confirmed as part of the National Police pretrial investigation, and it is only on the basis of the results of that investigation that the prosecutor's office can make appropriate procedural decisions after the relevant facts and evidence have been clarified and established. According to Ukrainian media, Leshenko utilized some of the cash for a roughly $60,000 payment to current Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky's 2019 campaign. Zelensky then nominated Leshenko as the government's Minister of Rural Affairs and Food. The Associated Press was unable to independently confirm the gift. A request for comment to Zelensky's office was not returned. Next, we have Leshenko's comments. Leshenko was questioned by the Kiev Post last year amid controversy about the contribution. According to the newspaper, Leshenko's dying father made the $60,000 contribution. According to Leshenko, he and his father viewed Zelensky as the only person who wanted to transform Ukraine and implement fundamental reforms. According to Magnuson, Leshenko eventually returned some money to Magnuson's brother, but he also threatened to have him jailed if he didn't stop talking openly 
openly about his fraud allegations. Groshans and his assistant were detained in November on charges of conspiring to kill Lyshenko. Claims that Groshans' supporters claim are completely false, but might have resulted from Groshans' engagement of a private investigator to look into Lyshenko as part of his case. What do Groshans' supporters believe? His family and allies feel his detention was a pretext for burying his charges, especially in a country that has worked to shore up diplomatic and military assistance from the United States by reassuring the U.S. that it's committed to fighting corruption. His sister stated that her brother has never been an issue with the law in his 50 years of life and that she and her family don't think that any of this is genuine, since why would he want to kill someone if he was merely attempting to recover money that was lawfully owed to him? His supporters are urging the Biden administration to legally classify him as a wrongful detainee, allowing his case to be moved to the State Department's office of the Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs. However, given the possibility of a Russian incursion and the United States' declining diplomatic presence, his family thinks that the window for attention to Grozhin's situation may be short. Now, in other related news, the current situation with Russia and Ukraine. Despite invading soldiers' attempts to destroy Ukrainian morale by striking inhabited areas, the strength of Ukraine's resistance continues to surprise Russia. In its daily operations report, the Ukrainian military stated that its soldiers had been fighting tough battles to retain specific boundaries. The general staff of the armed forces reported that Russian troops had been demoralized and were in a very poor moral and psychological state as a result of the Ukrainian people's resistance. President Joe Biden of the United States talked with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky about the ongoing efforts to impose sanctions on Russia and facilitate U.S. military, humanitarian, and economic support. During the phone call, the two also addressed negotiations between Russia and Ukraine, according to the White House, but no further specifics were provided. Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla, also conversed with Zelensky, who announced that the country would get additional Starlink satellite internet terminals this week. Visa and MasterCard, both located in the United States, have stated that their Russian operations would be suspended. In response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced a six-point plan, which he is pushing other nations to embrace, in order to guarantee that Russia fails in its obvious attempt to take over its democratic neighbor. Next, China stands with Ukraine. Wang Yi, China's foreign minister, has reminded U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken that Beijing condemns any steps in Ukraine that add fuel to the fire. Wang urged rapid talks to end the issue and said the U.S. and Europe should consider the harmful impact of NATO's eastward expansion on Russia's security. According to Blinken, the globe is responding to Russian aggression in full agreement, assuring that Moscow will pay a heavy price. Blinken walked into Ukrainian land for a meeting with Dmitry Kuliba, the country's foreign minister, who anticipated Russia's loss but requested further military aid. Blinken also paid a visit to a welcome facility put up by Polish officials, which is home to roughly 3,000 migrants. Lastly, reports from the Ukrainian military. In its latest operational report, the Ukrainian military stated that Russian forces remain focused on Kiev while going forward with assaults on Kharkiv, Mykolaiv, and the development of a land corridor to Crimea. According to the report, airstrikes on military and civilian facilities in Kiev and Zhitomir were launched from airports on Belarusian territory. According to a regional authority, Russia has launched deadly bombs on residential neighborhoods in Chechnyiv, in Chernihiv, a city north of Kiev. Vyacheslav Charles shared a shot of an unexploded FAB-500, a 500-kilogram airdropped bomb created by the Soviet Union. Although these bombs are commonly employed against military industrial sites and defended structures, a top official from the NGO Doctors Without Borders has warned that the human rights situation in the southern Ukrainian port of Mariupol is catastrophic and that residents must be evacuated. The International Monetary Fund has said that it may grant $1.4 billion in emergency financing as soon as next week, citing the severe effects of conflict on the global economy. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.